All right, this should be a quick tutorial about how to connect uh, SVN into SourceForge.net. Uh, we're going to use Tortoise SVN for this. Uh, I've used it. I like it. Fair enough. Go ahead and download SVN or Google it. It downloads. Either choose the 64 or 32 bit, bit version. Simple install. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. We're going to create a new project here. Uh, pretend that it's. Uh, Pretend that uh, we haven't uh, done any of this before, and you can see it from beginning to end. We're going to create a new folder. I'm calling it project. You can call it whatever you want. Very original. Uh, we're going to download. Now we're going to download everything from SourceForge down to our actual local computer. Do so. Right-click on the project or the folder that you have, and SVN checkout. You have to find the uh, uh, URL uh, for your project, specifically for ours. You can certainly copy and paste it. By all means, anybody can copy it, uh, but only uh, administrators and developers can ever upload anything to this. Later on, you will need a password and uh, username. Everything else should be stay the same. This should be the directory that I just created, and hit OK. Show that everything does work properly. You'll see all these files download. Awesome. Hit OK. And when you open up the project, um, if you don't see the screen check mark, just refresh the page and you should notice it then. Open it up and then you should notice the three folders. On each side of these folders are your C files, headers, etc. Each one of these files, uh, excuse me, each one of these directories are um, significant because they consider are considered to be different uh, projects uh, that I created before. Uh, we'll now use uh, Visual Studio in our uh, development to create a project, uh, actually three projects because there's three folders, and put them all under one solution so that's easier to work in one application of Visual Studio instead of having three applications of Visual Studio because we have three different projects. To start this up, you can go to File, New, Project, because it is C++, make sure you're under C++, under General, Empty project. The reason why we need empty is because we already have our files. We don't need anything extra. The project name will actually for it coincide with the project uh, name here. Or I hit F2 to highlight it. Control C to copy. Come back in and paste it. I actually hit copy again. So we'll try doing that better. Pasting. We do want it under project. Once again, we do want an empty project. Hit OK. And now everything should fill in as expected. Now the question is, does everything get overwritten? Well, now they just merge together. You still have the Microsoft Visual whatever created, but if you open it further down, you should see your files untouched. Come to the solution sandbox, right click it, and now we're going to add the next project. We'll create a new project, and this name of the next project folder, copy and paste. But we do not want to want it underneath the sandbox directory. We want it under the project directory because we want to keep this hierarchy. Hit OK, and now we have two projects under the same solution. Next thing we can do is certainly add a new project because this going to correspond to this engine. You can certainly type it in, but I'm lazy. And copy and paste. Once again, we do not want to add it under the sandbox. We want to add it under project. Make sure it's empty project again under C. Hit OK. And there we have our three projects. But our current repository files are not included into this project. So if you ever need to do that, click on the project that you want to add the files to, come up to this show all files, and under engine, you can certainly click all this. So I can click all of this and include in the project. Wonderful. Come back to your project here and unhide that one. Show the files and go to the next project. Once again, we can select the ones we want to include. Include in the project. Awesome. If you notice that it's not possible, that could be because you actually have one of the projects highlighted. So unhighlight it and include in the project. Wonderful. Come back up here, hide any extra files, and go to the third one, 
Yes, you do have to do it for all three. You can't select all three at the same time and attempt to do it. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. If it does, great, but whatever. Include projects and then come back and hide the folders. Now you can see that each of the files are in their respective folders. And if there's any questions, you can certainly do ask. Uh, the, it appears that uh, it may mess up on any type of folder hierarchy that it had before, but that's easy enough to fix by just creating a file or folder and then including it into that folder itself. But it's fair enough. Now, if you try building this, select build, obviously we have a lot of errors, or we're going to, it's because we haven't included our GL or QT directory. Also, I'll make another um, video of that. And so it's not expected to build, but at least we actually have our files into our project. We can uh, work on linking and building soon after. Now let's pretend you actually make a change. We're going to make a change under, let's say, clock H. Wonderful. We're going to make a change of, hey, look at that. Uh, no real change, but we actually did change. We end up saving it, coming into our folder, and look at that under engine and under the engine, under timing, and there it is, clock.h. Uh, that was what changed, that's why you have that red um, circle with the explanation point. That means that this version, or this file, is different from the repository, and uh, it's letting us know, right even from the get-go, as we open our project, that there's something out of date. Because we did make a change, uh, you may want to update it every five minutes, every half hour, any type of significant change. Certainly go for it. I don't care how many updates you do. Um, just to update as, as whatever you can remember. Just think of a, uh, video games as Jamie King, one of the YouTube video um, guys, mentioned. Uh, if you're playing a game and you forget to hit the uh, save button, uh, it's going to suck if you have to do all that work again. So good kudos, Jamie King, uh, once again, who came up with that idea. Um, it's a good analogy, so I use it. Because we made a um, change, we're going to come to this commit, because we're going to commit the change to the repository, like so. Anytime you make a commit, you want to add a message to what has been changed. This right here, nothing no real change. It just have been made. This is just a mock. It allows uh, what you have done differently since the last update so that if you really screw up you can at least go back to like oh yeah I remember this other revision uh, number and it wasn't that bad it, we have a message to view it I'll show you in just a moment with this view message and uh, and then you backtrack to where you need to when it comes to actual particular uh, items or files only thing you really need to do is just download or, or uh, check the any H or CPP files that you specifically changed. We don't need these object files or anything else. It's all junk. Um, each version of um, Visual Studio may create a different one, and I certainly don't need my junk, uh, your junk, and you don't need mine. So anything you specifically create, by all means, upload it. Anything else, forget it. To make the change, just hit OK, and you will get a pop up. I've already had my own pop up, I already saved it, but uh, it'll ask you for your username and password. Only developers or admins are allowed to uh, be included into this uh, change. If you can somehow hack my account, then by all means, I don't care. Uh, hit OK, and at that point, you can see the green mark. It shows that uh, everything is now updated, and now I am consistent with the repository, and I can just keep on working like I've been doing my thing, and then let's make another change. I just commit again. Now let's say that uh, a day passes by, or two days, and somebody else makes a change to the repository. Guess what? Let's just update our changes. Just automatically do this every time you come in. So at that point, there's no consideration. You have the most updated change. Uh, what you want to do is you want to update your local project with the repository. Hit OK. And voila, no changes. OK. And then you can keep working like you were. Again, it's wonderful. Uh, to show that changes actually have been made. You can see that I've already made a few uh, attempts at making this video, but we hit F5 to see if I can just reload. Oh, it keeps on kicking me out, whatever. 
I'm gonna oh, right there. Now we're at chances that we made. This is just a mock. There you go. Instant. And then we can even look at that. That's the only change that was made. So and we can like oh whatever. So I don't care. Uh, no real change. Perfect. So now that should be uh, basic over. I can't think of anything else that needs to be added. All these. Uh, who cares about all that? If there's any questions, do ask. And uh, yeah. Well, I'm not worried about the QT versions or the uh, or GL. I'll, I'll worry about that later on.